Hey everybody, this is You Redefined. I um, wanted to give a update. I had a question that came in and that was, what was your experience like at Me Hospital while you were getting your um, sleeve surgery? Oh, by the way, this is Miss Zoe. Say hi, Zoe. That's Miss Zoe and she's spoiled and I've been away from her so she's like really needy. So she won't make any noise while I'm making this video. I decided to just pick her up. Anyway, um, my experience at Me Hospital was really, really good. When I first got there, I had same day um, procedure. And when I first got there, first off, let me say this, they met me, um, the, the staff from the Lighter Me met me, um, the driver met me at the airport. They were very, very prompt, very courteous. And they were very, very professional and very, very accommodating. Um, and I will say that when we got to the hospital, I was not expecting it to be so quick once we crossed over the border. It was literally like 20 minutes um, to get where we needed to be at the hospital. But when I got there, the first thing they told me was, okay, um, here's your papers you need to sign and take your clothes off um, and uh, we're going to do some blood work, we're going to do an EKG and uh, we'll go from there. And it was so funny because about 10 minutes after I got to, um, after I got in the room and I took my clothes off, I was like, well, wait a minute, I need to make some calls. And uh, they were like, okay, well, but you're, you know, we've got one person in front of you. The doctor, Dr. Lopez has one person in front of you. And he is ready to move forward with your procedure. And I was—I think that's probably why I started having a panic attack because it went so quick. I literally was probably there an hour and a half to two hours before I was dressed, EKG done, all the blood work came back. I was already registered in everything and they were ready to wheel me off. Um, they had done my, um, not a lighter me, but the me hospital staff. They had already done my blood work, and so they just gave me my IVs, which for me is painful. I don't like needles at all. I don't know too many people who do, but um, needless to say, um, they did my IV, and it was good. It was good. It was when I tell you it was good to go. It was good to go. So after that, um, I will say I didn't have any complications. They want to make sure that when you are settled after your surgery, oh, well, let me go back. Let me tell you about the anesthesiologist. That anesthesiologist, I cannot think of her name, but she is cute as a button. And I'm a very straight woman. Okay. So don't be tripping. But nevertheless, she is cute as a button. And when I tell you she is professional, she came in and her Jimmy Choo's, honey, and she gave us fashion. But then she was so knowledgeable. She was so polite. And I shared with her, I said, I'm a preacher and I sing and I cannot have a large intubation tube. So she made note and they used a small one. They were very, very accommodating. And uh, when I got wheeled into um, the uh, operating room, she says, OK, just step, step up and get on on the uh, bed. And all I remember her saying is it's going to be OK. And I was out and I woke up and it was hours later. And I was like, when am I going to have my surgery, basically? And it was already over um, after I had my little panic attack. Um, but I will say I know that it was the prayers of the people who I did let know. Because I, I did not tell anybody other than my close friends and family that I was going because I wanted them to pray. I told people that I knew would pray. And, um, and they were praying around the clock. Our church was praying for me around the clock. Uh, shout out to the Faith Church of Atlanta. And um, I'm telling you, those prayers availed much. But when I got out um, and it was over and it was so festive, the mood that was in the operating room, I had two, surger two surgeons. I had an anesthesiologist. I had a whole staff of nurses and doctor's assistants and nurse's assistants. It had to be like about eight or nine people in that room. Um, and then when I was done, they all came to see me and to make sure I was okay. And that was what was wonderful. Now, I will say this. So while I was there, like my second day, um, one of the young ladies that is there, she's not really, really young, but she looks like she's in her mm, 50s, maybe. She may not be in her 50s. I don't know. Um, but she was a, a person that was there at the hospital. She's not a part of the Lighter Me staff. And um, I kept trying to talk to her. She didn't understand English. Everybody else understood English very, very well. So you don't have to worry about language barriers. But she didn't understand English. And I had to point to her because my IV 
they told me to remind the doctor, I mean the nurse, just in case I see it and they don't see it because um, my door was closed a lot if my IV was running low. So it was running low and they told me, you know, if the blood would back up into the the, hole, the, uh, the tube in the in the the bag and it would hurt and it did it started to hurt so I was trying to tell her and she didn't understand what I was saying so eventually she said you know she she got it but I was real irritated with her I was real irritated because she kept coming in and out of my room and she should have noticed but nevertheless that was my only bad you know occurrence that was there um, I will say that um, Janice and Abraham from a lighter me they came, um, they were there, they made sure I had everything. I had left my toothbrush. They went and got me a toothbrush, a real toothbrush, not the kind that comes from the hotel or the hospital, a real toothbrush. And they went and got one, and then they took us shopping. So on the first day I was there at the hospital was a surgery. The second day was recuperation day, and um, by Wednesday I was up walking and ready to go to the hotel. And uh, then they took us shopping. They went and had a little light custard or ice cream. Um, and then we went little, you know, little shopping, get some trinkets, and um, and then we went back to our room because it was the Miami Heat game. So, uh, well, they weren't gonna miss that. Even in Mexico, honey, they were bringing it with that Miami Heat game, and it was a big deal there at the hot, at the hotel. But um, my me hospital was experience was wonderful. It's a very very clean hospital, and I don't understand why everybody always says that, but I think. Oh, I shouldn't say I don't understand. I do understand because what we see on TV is that if it's not American or if it's not English or if it's not in Abu Dhabi or Dubai, then it's not right. And that's that's so messed up. Um, I had a wonderful time and the hotel was beautiful, of course, as a Marriott brand. But the hospital was a very, very quiet boutique hospital and everybody was there and everybody that was a um, patient, they were all supporting each other um, and the drivers came and t took care of us and let me tell you something else even when we got to the hospital I still had my drains in I only had one drain and um, if you've seen the video I've already talked about you know getting my drains out but I had one drain and the doctor came and took my drain out they didn't send a nurse they didn't send a nurse's assistant nothing wrong with that but my doctor the surgeon he came and he did house calls and he worked his way from the bottom of the hotel to at the top of the hotel with all the patients and he took care of us and I cannot do anything other than tell you that they were amazing. Now, I want to answer the other question. Why did you choose to have the surgery in Mexico versus America? Don't you have insurance? Absolutely. I have amazing insurance. I mean, great insurance. But the insurance here in America, it really is about money. Insurance people, insurance companies, they have, they're making money. And um, when I went to go see the doctor here, they told me I needed to gain 30 more pounds. I don't need to gain 30 more pounds. That would have been ridiculous. And they told me that it was going to be $60,000 and my insurance would cover some of it. But the insurance that I have, it was going to leave me with a small balance. I didn't mind that. It was just the issue of I had to go get a psyche eval. I had to go get a nutrition evaluation, which I didn't mind. And um, But they didn't require all that in, uh, in Mexico. Now, I had already done it, so I already knew what... what um, what my stats was but for those who are wondering you don't have to go through all that when you go to Mexico and my service was forty six hundred dollars plus my airplane fare now get it it was sixty thousand billed with my insurance if I did it here in the states it was forty six hundred and I paid for that um, out of pocket and so you can pay online in, in, in payments if you need to break it up and send it right to them. They have great accounting and they keep track and they will work with you. And so I want to encourage anybody who's saying, but I can't afford it. Pay as you go. Get it down if you're going to do a self-pay. If you can do it in America, great. But I'm going to tell you, Dr. Lopez is an American taught physician. He doesn't have any um, fatalities. And um, he does this all day. He doesn't do this in something else. And so he and his staff are excellent at it. This is what they concentrate on. He is a, if it was like a scholarly thing, he's a scholar when it comes to this because this is his specialty. This is what he does every day on the hour. And they get started late. So they're not going to have you at 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock getting no surgery. You probably started about 11 or 12 or after lunch. 
and they're going to go all the way to nine o'clock at night, eight or nine o'clock at night. I know my surgery was at seven. And so I just wanted to just kind of give you a realistic view of why I chose to do the things the way I chose to do it. And, um, the support. I had a girlfriend. I'm going to let her remain nameless. She knows exactly who she is. Um, she showed up at an event that was a surprise event for me earlier in the year. And I knew her, but I didn't recognize her. And I said to one of my other girlfriends, I said, she looks like so-and-so. She said, that is so-and-so. And I yelled her name and we hugged and I couldn't believe it. She has lost so much weight and she told me about her journey and she walked me through it. And um, I want to respect her privacy, but I don't mind sharing with you because I have a lot of followers on Facebook. I have between the several pages and the followers, I have a lot of followers. We're talking almost 10,000. And so I realize that as a pastor that I have a voice and although I'm not a celebrity, I'm not on television or anything like that. I know that people respect what I say and they know that I speak from a place of honesty and integrity and really, really wanting the best for everybody. And so if you are um, considering doing weight loss, um, and I know me, I have tried HCG, I have tried um, the little uh, Adapex um, with the water pills. Um, I even own an HCG company and that actually did very well for me, but I needed to lose it quicker than I did and keep it off. And um, I just wanted to handle it that way. Um, I am not opposed to Weight Watchers or working out. And let me help you understand something. For all of you all who think, well, you took the easy route out. That's a lie. The lies you tell. <laughs> no, sweetheart. I did not take the easy way out because the recovery is not the easiest thing in the world because you're very, very tired. But... Um, between that, you do need to work out. You got to change your whole eating habits, the way you chew, what you drink, how much you consume. You have to change everything. And yes, it is different from a gastro bypass. Yes, it is different from a lap band. I, cho I chose not to do those. This is what I felt was best for me after doing a lot of um, research and talking to my friend who um, walked me through the journey because she had gone through the journey. Um, I just want to walk, help walk you through the journey. Um, no regrets. Do I have regrets? No. Now, when you ask me and looked at the other video, would I do it again? I said, no, absolutely not. But that's what most people say. Even after you have a baby, you ask a mother, a new mother, the day she has a baby, or the day after she has a baby, when she, she ready, she want to do it again, she's going to tell you no, unless it was easy as she was put out to sleep. But you know, weeks later, would I do it again? Yes. I know that it saved my life. I know that it gave longevity to my life. And I know it gave me um, a better quality of life. And so whatever method you choose to use as you go through your weight loss journey, just do it. And to all of my friends who are people of the gospel, to all of my friends who are um, mothers and fathers and people that people depend on um, for your wisdom, your insight, your support, your nurturing, and for you to be there, they need you, but they need you to be healthy. And so I'm going to encourage you, consider this and log on to alightermeat.com. You will um, see the information there. You can go to beautiful Puerto Vallada. You can go to Tijuana. I forget what the other location is. And make a vacation out of it. Um, and uh, if you call, tell them that... Um, they know me as Tier Bishop Tier McCrary. Um, let them know that I sent you. Ask to speak to Janice, and uh, she will take care of you. She will walk you through, and she is on call literally 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and she will make sure that you are fine. And, and she will even come visit you if you need. She needs to um, while you're there at the hospital. I know she came and visited us and did a little shopping with us. And so, thank you so much, Janice, for helping change my life. And um, that's basically it. Won't hold you and uh, make sure that you look for the next video. All right. Bye.